Minimum flow for centrifugal pumps must be understood by pump users and system designers. Hi, I'm Doug Kriebel, and I'd like to help you understand this important fact. Every pump has a minimum flow. Originally, only thermal conditions were used to fix the minimum flow. As flow decreases, the temperature rise across the pump increases. This is easy to explain. Looking at a system, you can see that the power consumed by the pump is greater than the actual, called theoretical power, developed by the pump flow and head from the pump because it is not 100% efficient. So where does that difference go? Into heat. That heat can be dissipated by radiation or convection from the pump casing, but the majority is removed by heating the liquid being pumped. This increases the temperature of the pumpage. As the flow decreases, the efficiency decreases, and a greater amount of heat per unit mass is going into the liquid while there is less and less mass to remove the heat. This means the temperature rise across the pump increases asymptotically toward shutoff. There is a point and time where the temperature rise will cause damage to the pump. The pump can never be run for any length of time below this point. Other minimum flow restrictions, which occur at a higher flow, could be set by the pump design. All centrifugal pumps have two sets of hydraulic loads. An axial load causing a thrust toward the impeller eye and a radial load causing a thrust perpendicular to the shaft. This illustrates how the higher pressure acting behind the impeller eye section causes an axial load toward the suction of the pump. This load must be handled by the thrust bearings. As the pump moves back on its curve, the pressure and load can increase to a point causing thrust bearing failure. This could set a minimum flow based on axial loading. Designers minimize axial loads with balance holes, back rings, and pump out vanes. Similarly, centrifugal pumps generate radial loads due to load imbalances around the impeller. This is due to volute geometry. The pump designer tries to minimize radial loads at the best efficiency point, but as the pump moves back on its curve, it generates more pressure and more radial load imbalance. These radial loads may cause shaft deflection, which in turn leads to seal failures, bearing failures, and sometimes shaft failures. These loads are sometimes balanced by using dual volute, triple volute, or diffuser designs to reduce radial loads. Today's designs usually have sufficient shaft and bearing designs to allow operation at pretty low flows, but operations at low flows can shorten life. Some lower specific speed pumps have a droop at low flows. This will cause surging from point A to point B. Therefore, the pump minimum flow should be set above point B. Conversely, some high specific speed pumps have high rise to shut off and the downstream working pressure may limit the minimum flow. In the 70s, major pump manufacturers found through failure analysis that some high energy pumps showed reduced reliability at low flows. These studies show that internal recirculation caused by continuous operation at low flows create high vibration and erosion, similar to cavitation. These problems occur when the pump is operated at low flow for extended periods of time. For this reason, manufacturers have established the minimum continuous stable flow. Depending on the design, it could range from as low as 10% to as high as 75% or more of the best efficiency point. Another factor is suction specific speed. It is defined as the pump speed times the square root of flow per I divided by the NPSH to the three quarter. It's an index of suction stability. A lot is published about suction specific speed and reliability. 
But what has happened is that users and designers try to reduce installation costs by driving NPSH available down. Manufacturers respond by designing pumps with lower NPSH required. This is usually done by increasing the impeller eye area and changing geometry. However, it's been shown that higher suction specific speeds will narrow the stable continuous operation of a pump. In general, the higher the suction specific speed, the narrower the stable operating range. This could set the minimum continuous stable flow. Therefore, the amount of minimum continuous stable flow is based upon both the suction specific speed and the pump design. In summary, your pump needs protection from overheating, excessive axial and radial loads, and from unstable operation from either kerf shape, low flow circulation, or suction specific speed. Your pump supplier can tell you what the minimum flow requirements are for your specific pump. We know this information will be useful to you, but if you need help, we're here for you.